Welcome to the second quiz and in this quiz we will be taking up a topic in science which also relates to current affairs. Indeed the most trending topic currently is uh, the Wuhan coronavirus which has so far killed more than 80 people and it's feared that it may even become a global health emergency. Right, so this is hopefully a viral quiz on coronaviruses. Let's see how much do you know about a topic which you can't avoid reading about on a daily basis. So here we go, question number one. Right, so which of these is or are true with respect to a coronavirus? The first one has got to do with the very name itself. So this virus is called coronavirus after the sun's corona which is usually hidden by the bright light of the sun's surface and cannot be seen without special instruments. That's your first statement. And the second statement is that the Wuhan coronavirus causes pneumonia which can be treated with antibiotics if the immune system of the patient is healthy. Right? So now you have to make up your mind about which of these is or are correct or none of them is correct. Right, so you can probably pause and make up your mind if you need some more time. Let's uh, move to the answer here. The answer here is, what do you think? Statement number one. I mean, this had to come to your mind, right? Why is it called a coronavirus? It is not true. And statement number two, Indeed, it causes pneumonia, but again, it's logical. If it could be easily treated with antibiotics, then why would the world be so worried about this disease at all, right? So the answer here is neither is true. Both these statements are false. The name coronavirus comes from corona, but this corona, corona actually stands for crown, right? So this looks like a crown which has protrusions around it. That's from where the word corona virus comes from and it cannot be treated with an antibiotic in fact it cannot even be treated with antiviral drugs though in china they have found out that that certain anti hiv drugs are working uh, are, are working well not in preventing the disease but in treating the symptoms so this is all we know about the coronavirus uh, so far from, from China that no drug except for certain anti-HIV drugs are working on it. Let's go to the second question now. So which of these is are true uh, uh, as um, uh, with respect to the family of coronaviruses? Statement one, people around the world commonly get infected with human coronaviruses. And statement number two, since 2004, there have not been any known cases of SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which is of course caused by a coronavirus reported anywhere in the world. So again, make up your mind, one only, two only, both are true or neither is true. Alright, so again, let me think with you, people around the world commonly get infected with uh, I have to be careful when I read sentences. I have to keep my uh, tone very neutral. Otherwise, uh, the biases may show up and you may end up marking the wrong or right answer based on that. Right. So uh, let's get to the answer here. In this case, both are true. Yes, you also might you know without you knowing it's probable that you could have been infected by a human coronavirus. Not all coronaviruses are deadly. In fact, other than SARS, only MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, and now the 2019 novel coronavirus, they have been found to be deadly. Right? So it's not really surprising that uh, the human coronaviruses are among the most common infection causing uh, microbes in the world. Right, so do not really panic. So the, if 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 you have any coronavirus other than SARS, MERS, or the 2019 coronavirus, for example, the 229E coronavirus leads to common cold, which can be treated even without you visiting a doctor. Right, and the SARS, uh, as you probably know, in 2002-2003, SARS caused havoc around the world. Just like the 2019 coronavirus, it originated from China. 
and then it spread to neighboring countries. Overall, more than 750 people died as a result of that. And after that, this has not been found. In fact, for the 2019 virus, it was being believed initially that this might be a recurrence of SARS, but it is now conclusively established that this virus has a completely different structure for, from the SARS coronavirus. We do not really know what it is, but we definitely know what it is not. Now let's come to the third question. So the World Health Organization has not yet declared, it's under a lot of pressure to do this, uh, that the 2019 NCOV, that is novel coronavirus, is an international public health emergency. The question is, and technically the international public health emergency is called as public health emergency of international concern, PHEIC by the World Health Organization. So the question is, which of these is or are the current disease, disease outbreaks that actually are deemed PHEIC by the World Health Organization. That is, when right now the 2019 NCOV is not a PHEIC, is there a disease which is already called PHI, PHEIC by the World Health Organization? Option A is Ebola, option B is polio, option C is both Ebola and polio and option D is no disease in the world right now, no disease outbreak rather has been called as a PHEIC by the World Health Organization. Please make up your mind and we move to the answer. If you haven't made, made up your mind, just make a guess. See how lucky are you today. So the answer here is both A and B. You probably knew about Ebola if you have been uh, even somewhat studious of what's happening around the world, you would know that in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ebola has been causing havoc for the last couple of years. Polio is somewhat surprising, I, I, I would say, because uh, you know polio was supposed to have been eliminated from this world. However, in, in around 2013-14, it was noticed that polio cases were rising again, especially in three countries. They were Pakistan, Cameroon and Syria because of which in 2014 the WHO took up this extraordinary measure of declaring it as a PHEIC not because it was spreading very fast across international borders because it, it wanted it to be stopped right there in its tracks before it again became a major international concern and in, the, in, in, in December 2019 this status PHEIC for polio has been again extended so right now it's polio and Ebola. And by the way, in Congo, the Ebola crisis could have been easily contained. Now we have drugs to take care of that. The bigger problem there is that people do not trust the uh, medical workers. In fact, many workers, healthcare workers have been killed and there, there is a, a, a lot of uh, commonplace belief that Ebola is just a hoax which has been spread by a particular political group to gain control over the country. So it's more of a psychological crisis that has led to this uh, unprecedented number of deaths by Ebola rather than a problem of medicine, which is the case with the 2019 NCOV right now. Now let's go to the uh, next question. Uh, question four deals with viruses in general. So let's see how well do you know your virus. Uh, segment one is that viruses depend on the host cells that they infect to reproduce. And segment two is viruses do not carry out respiration. Right? So statement one in a way also means that viruses cannot reproduce without a host cell. And statement two is that viruses do not really do not carry out respiration at all. Your options as always are one only, two only, both are true or neither is true. Pause, make up your mind. Let's go to the answer. The answer here is, it is, both are true. Indeed, uh, both are true. If uh, Even if you went to a Wikipedia page of uh, virus and had read, read the first two paragraphs, you would have come across these facts. Right, so let me tell you very bluntly, if you are not able to answer this question, then your knowledge of basic science uh, is uh, somewhat uh, you know, lacking and I'm being polite here. 
So uh, viruses actually cannot reproduce without a host cell. In fact, they are just uh, you know, they, are, they are dormant without any activity, uh, and they they basically exist as a coat, as a protein coat without a host cell. And they do not carry out any respiration, which means they do not process food to release energy. The only thing that these viruses can do actually is to multiply through a host cell. That's all. Imagine them becoming so powerful. Right. So now let's move to the last one, which paints these uh, villains in a good light. So viruses, it seems, have a big positive role to play. They carry out natural genetic engineering. So a virus, what it does sometimes is that it carries genetic, genetic material from its host as it replicates to another, another host which may not be related to the previous host and therefore you, you know, pass on the genetic material from one species to another or, or one subspecies to another. This is a fact. What is this phenomenon known as? Option A, transduction. Option B, bacteriophage. Option C, electroporation. Uh, Option D is transfection. Right, so transduction, bacteriophage, electroporation, transfection. You have no opportunity here to do 50-50 because this is a serious thing here. So let's, let's make up your, uh, I mean, you make up your mind as I come to the answer. Uh, again, I would say you would have heard about bacteriophage. That is not the answer. The answer is transduction. This natural genetic engineering carried out by many viruses is called transduction. It mostly happens from one bacterium to another. Right? So foreign DNA is introduced into a bacterial cell by a virus usually, but it can also or theoretically occur from one species to another. Bacteriophage basically is not 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 a not not a process it's a noun so you could have rejected it even on that ground it's a virus that infects and replicates within bacteria and bacteriophages have a very important role to play in in our defense mechanism against uh, certain bacteria and a lot of research is carried being carried out including treating certain kinds of cancer bacteriophages have a use there electroporation is uh, simply the use of an electric field to make cell membrane permeable while transfection is uh, deliberately introducing certain pure nucleic acids into the uh, eukaryotic, the, the amproitic cells. Right, so <clears throat> the answer here was A and that ends the quiz for today. I mean, I would like it if you could put your score and rate this uh, on difficulty level and how realistic it is for your, uh, you know, uh, for the purpose for which you have been using. Alright, so I leave you with uh, this. I was about to write <laughs> subscribe when I came across this meme. So yeah, it's up to you if you want. Please subscribe. Anyway, I will be regular with the quizzes. So thank you and uh, see you in the next quiz.